While the hallways of Capitol Hill emptying out again as Congress heads home to ask you to send them back for yet another turn. But a trend appears to be surfacing right now. Democrats on the campaign trail keeping their distance from a certain someone by the name of President Barack Obama. So does this tell us something about the midterm election? We're joined now by Angela McGlowan, Fox News political analyst, and Ben Wickler, Washington director of MoveOn.org and talk radio host. Uh, welcome to you both. Uh, Thanks, Kelly. You know, Thanks, Ben Kelly. and Angela, we're looking at this midterm, and usually people would rally around <laughs> President Obama if you go back a couple of years ago, uh, even when Democrats were pushing through that uh, Affordable Health Care Act. Right mm -hmm. now, it appears that a lot of Democrats are saying, persona non grata, let's keep the president right there in Washington. Let's not bring him back to our constituents. Why, Ben? Why? Well, Kelly, thanks for having me on, Angela. It's great to see you. You I think too. No matter what party you're in, you'd have to be crazy to not run against Washington right now. However you feel about the president, and I should say grassroots Democratic voters actually support the president still in high numbers, but however you feel about the president, he's not on the ballot this time. It's Congress, and Congress's approval ratings are 14 percent. That's just a smidgen higher than Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, Ben. Uh, Angela, yeah, did you top that? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so, Kelly. But Ben, uh, you know, uh, senatorial de Democrats that are running for re-election, they didn't get that memo that grassroots Democrats uh, really support this president. They're running away from president like the plague. If you look in 2009, Kelly, Democrats were euphoric about President Barack Obama. On the congressional House floor, they mentioned his name and his initiatives over 200 times. But now they don't even want to be seen with him on the campaign trail. And also Cummings, Clyburn, and Lewis, congressional black caucus members, they're actually going to red states, actually campaigning for the president for senatorial Democrats. So that's the problem. Well, again, and Ben, I asked the question. I loved your answer. It was very entertaining. But again, let's get to the, the nucleus of this. What is the bottom line? Why is the president's, you know, what if factor factoring so badly for Democrats? So in a midterm election like this, the number one question is who comes out to the polls? MoveOn.org yep. has been doing its own polling. I'm sure the Democrats have their own. And what we've been finding is that the thing that motivates potential voters for this fall actually isn't to vote for or against the president. The but, number but one ben, thing ben, is to avoid ben, a Senate ben. takeover by Republicans and see what we saw in the House, which is votes against birth control and holding oh, down the ben, minimum wage. Spin it, Ben. Spin it like you want to, Ben. The <laughs> fact is, incumbents cannot run away from their voting record. And you and I can agree that Democrats in the House and the Senate voted, president, voted for President Obama's initiatives lock and step. The Affordable Care Act, the failed policies dealing with the stimulus packages, on and on and on, and they can't run away from that. All right, let's get away from the spin, spin zone right now. The spin stops here, as a great colleague <laughs> of mine says. Uh, so let's go right to the numbers in terms of how many times the president has been mentioned. Uh, can we bring that up real quick, that chart? 92 times Republicans have mentioned President Barack Obama compared to just 39 times by Democrats. Now, yep. this is a rock star in the Democratic circles here to four, but right now, his luster's wearing off, Ben. What's the deal? Well, let me ask you, if you were running Don't ask me, for the I'm Senate you. in I'm Arkansas, not for president. let's say you're running for the I'm Senate for in Congress. Arkansas. I'm just asking you a simple against question. President Obama. You're spinning me, man. No, no, yeah. listen. If you're in a state that did not vote for President Obama in 2012, you're not going to run your campaign as a vote for me as a vote for Obama. You're going to run it on the substance. And the but as your colleague is, Angela McLaughlin just yeah. mentioned, you've got Democrats going to those red states. That's something the president would have boldly done and would have had audacity to do, as a matter of fact, uh, last year and even the year right. before that. Angela? Right. Yeah, I mean, and you're talking about the red states, Ben, Arkansas, Louisiana. Look at Colorado. Udall is down in the polls. And also, even with the gubernatorial race, the governor there might not win re-election, his re-election bid, because the president is so unpopular. But, Kelly, I can give President Obama this. He can raise the heck out of some money. Okay, it takes more I'm glad than you money. brought that up. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up because, look, listen to this. The Republican National Committee says it has raised more than $10 million last month alone. Last mm -hmm. month alone. And again, best at the Democratic National Committee, the Democrats not raising nearly that amount, raising something like $7 million. That, Kelly, if I could jump in here. Sure, I think ben, this please. goes to the essential confusion of this whole question. This is not a presidential year, and this is yes. a congressional year. If you look at the yes. Democratic 
and Republican Senate committees and House mm -hmm. committees, Democrats mm -hmm. are outraising them on both fronts. But Ben, this you is said about confusing House and Senate question. candidates, and the way that they're outraising them is through grassroots donations that are all about a Republican takeover of the Senate. That is what's on the ballot. Okay, I that's get what, it. I that's get that's it. That's what Democrats what's on the ballot, are campaigning on. But there and is such a, a thing as presidential coattails, my friend. Yep. So what's happening with yep. the presidential coattails, since I'm asking such a foolish question? <laughs> Look, you know, the president's approval ratings, like second-term presidents for the last 40 or so years, are not as high as they were before. The president's about 41 percent. The question is, will voters see this election as a referendum on President Obama, yes. or will they see it yes. as a referendum on Congress? And for Democrats... We think this should be a referendum on Congress, whether you like what you've been seeing from the House of Representatives ben, or not, whether you want more ben, of that from the Senate. And Angela, 20, I will give you the final word here. Yes, in 2010, it was a referendum against the Affordable Care Act. That's when the Republicans took over the House. Now it's going to be a referendum against Obama's failed policies, and Republicans will retain the House and take over the Senate, my friend. Face the facts. Well, those are interesting facts. So, Ben and Angela, we thank you right, both for joining us.